What's up guys? Today we are going to be talking about the risers and fallers across the XFL for week four. But hey, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more XFL content. All right, guys. So lots of stuff happened over the course of week three, and we have quite a bit of information to piece through, try to figure out the best plan going forward, making sure that we are dominating in our fantasy leagues going forward, and just figuring things out uh, overall in terms of how this landscape is shifting. So with that, every week we review each and every single team in the XFL and look at who are the players who are rising in value, falling in value, and who are some of the players I'm advising we just have a holding pattern on, make sure that we don't overreact to last week. So looking at Dallas, uh, the Dallas Renegades definitely have a lot of risers here. Landry Jones uh, had three touchdowns this week. He's looking to become more and more comfortable on that offense, not... Uh, Definitely not near the same category as like an elite quarterback like P.J. Walker, but still very solid. Uh, should continue to be able to maintain this job as long as he can stay healthy. Should continue to rise. Lance Dunbar had 11 targets this week. Uh, ridiculous volume for a running back. Didn't do as well on the ground. His yards per carry went way down, but overall is still super involved in the pass game. So especially in PPR leagues, Lance Dunbar is... Uh, Definitely one of the most valuable running backs right now, even though Cameron Artis Payne is still the cream of the crop. Flynn Nagel had a touchdown this week, and Jazz Ferguson is not being used very much. Uh, Jeff Bidette also been kind of a disappointment. He's in our fallers section this week. Um, just overall has not been getting nearly the amount of uh, volume that we were hoping for. I haven't dropped his volume completely out the door yet. I still think he is good enough um, to you know, play really well on this offense, but right now they seem content with just throwing to Lance Denbar, Cameron Artis Payne, and our last riser of the week, even more so than last week, Donald Parham. Uh, two touchdowns this week, looked absolutely dominant. He did leave the game for about, you know, four or five plays after falling on his shoulder, but it doesn't look like that's anything that's gonna keep him out this week. Um, definitely the most valuable tight end by far, and one of the most valuable uh, receivers overall if you play in a league that doesn't have tight ends he still has tremendous value right now being on this high uh, octane team that wants to score a lot of touchdowns no one that I'm really holding steady on this week uh, pretty much um, the running backs quarterback and the tight end jumped up everyone else is kind of falling right now all right going over to the DC defenders now the defenders are one of the most head scratching teams right now after that poor performance against LA over the weekend we don't really know what to expect of this team going forward uh, I am for the most part keeping a holding pattern on a lot of these guys so I'm holding steady on Cardell Jones holding steady on all the receivers Rashad Ross Eli Rogers and DeAndre Tompkins I don't think this last week was indicative of who this team is, and I want to see how they respond this week going to Tampa Bay before I make any strict judge or harsh judgments in my fantasy rankings. But Jarrell Presley has continued to be a bit disappointing two weeks in a row now, getting less carries than Denell Pumphrey, and the carries that he has gotten, he hasn't done much with the ball. So Jarrell Presley definitely taking a bit of a hit in his fantasy stock this week. All right, looking at the Houston Roughnecks, I didn't think it was possible for Philip Walker and Cam Phillips and, and James Butler to rise any more than they already had, but they continue to rise up and up and up. If you have those guys, if you have all three of those guys, you're probably just going to ride them into your fantasy championships. No reason to move off of them. And then Sam Mobley takes a little bit of a rise as well. He looked pretty good this week, had four targets on the day and was also the uh, beneficiary of a three-point conversion. So good for him. I think he'll definitely continue to see a decent amount of usage. He's going to be a cheap option in DFS going forward. Uh, Sammy Coates continues to fall. He did have two deep targets in this one, but didn't come down with either of them. I still think that at some point in this season, it's going to flip around and Sammy Coates will get the usage that we are expecting. But for right now, it's working. Cam Phillips is working. Sammy Coates is doing nothing but drawing pass interference calls. So maybe that will be the role that he continues to play going forward. And then Nick Hawley disappointed this week. Nowhere near the same volume that we are expecting. So he's probably going to be pretty up and down. You can't really trust him going forward. Still holding steady on Khalil Lewis. He still had nine targets this week, even though he didn't have as many yards. Uh, he was also targeted in the red zone. So don't panic on Khalil Lewis. He's a buy low this week. All right, looking at the LA Wildcats, definitely one of the more exciting teams to talk about right now. Josh Johnson 
uh, you know, great quarterback rating this week. Looked awesome. Uh, his second week back definitely uh, took a step forward, recovering from that injury and just building rapport with this team. And a lot of that to do with Trey McBride, uh, who finally came back to this team and looked really dominant. Unfortunately, he got hurt towards the end of the game. We don't know currently the extent of that injury, but definitely on the uh, should be on your fantasy radar. And then Martez Carter with three touchdowns on the day, ran the ball really hard against a DC Defenders team that has been pretty good at stopping the run. Uh, Martez Carter looked really good in this game and is definitely going to be a fantasy running back force um, that you want to make sure to keep your eye on. Um, should definitely be rostered in every format. Some of the fallers with Martez Carter uh, blowing up, that definitely means Eliza Hood is falling from grace. Uh, you know, After the two fumbles that he had in week two, he was ruled out last week, even though he had a probable designation. I'm not sure if that was due to the injury or a coach decision, but it, I would be very shocked if they ended up giving the job back to Eliza Hood as long as Martez Carter continues playing the way that he has been. Uh, Jordan Smallwood still looks really good. Uh, he had only a few catches this last week, but on those he still looked like himself. But overall, I think he's just being crowded out here with Trey McBride now coming into the fold. Nelson Spruce is still there demanding a huge volume of targets. And Jordan Smallwood is just going to not have, he's not going to have enough volume uh, to warrant starting in fantasy until we see um, him establish himself a bit more as a, as a dominant target in that team. And then Brandon Barnes definitely saw a tick down in his value multiple weeks in a row of us, you know, just waiting for him to break out. I mean, there's not many tight ends. So if you play in a league where you have to start a tight end, he's still going to be rostered. He's still worth it. But otherwise, you're probably not going to be looking Brandon Barnes way anytime soon. Uh, we're definitely holding steady on Nelson Spruce. Uh, he didn't have the same production volume that he did this last week, but they didn't need to throw to him that much. Trey McBride got it done in the first half, and then the defenders never actually gave the Wildcats a run, so they didn't need to throw it that much. But on the few catches he did get, he still looked just as good as he did the first couple weeks. So shoot bounce back pretty quickly here. All right, looking at the New York Guardians, lots of... Uh, things to figure out for their offense. Um, definitely keeping an eye on Luis Perez. He looked to be the best of their three quarterbacks this last week. He was the only quarterback to be able to get it into the end zone there for New York. Uh, every other drive that they got near the end zone, they sputtered out. So Luis Perez, definitely someone to keep your eye on. I still think this team could be really good. They have a lot of playmakers on offense. They have a really good defense. So if they could figure out who their uh, you know, most solid quarterback will be, then I think this team could definitely see a rise across the board for all of their skill position players. And I think Luis Perez can hopefully provide that. We'll see if he gets the start though. Justin Stockton with five targets on the week did pretty good uh, receiving a lot of screen passes in this game. I think they will definitely want to use him a little bit more going forward. He gives them an extra dynamic to their team that they didn't have without him. Uh, definitely a better pass catcher than either Darius Victor or Tim Cook. Uh, Austin Duke also looked pretty decent in this one, kind of taking the place of Joe Horn, who was out this game. And I think that he uh, delivered on the targets that he got. I think he'll end up riding Austin Duke a bit more going forward. Uh, Matt McGloin continues to fall. Uh, I believe part of the reason why he was taken out of the game was because he was dealing with an injury. No extent on how uh, severe this injury is, but he also just looks like he may have just quit on the team. So at this point, I think you're probably safe moving on from Matt McGloin until we hear otherwise. And then I know I'm, I've said it multiple weeks in a row now, but I'm still holding steady on Mikael McKay. If this team can at least get some stability and figure out their offense, Mikael McKay is still clearly their best receiver on this team and uh, shouldn't be just straight up dropped or sold too low. You probably can't start him until you see some stability at the quarterback position, but at least we know that he's there for when this team can figure it out. Jumping over to the St. Louis Battlehawks, uh, we continue to see a rise for Matt Jones. He just keeps getting it done. Uh, closest, uh, uh, he and, and uh, Cameron Artis Payne are the only guys to even come close to a 100 yard game at this point, and he still continues to look explosive every time he touches the ball. Christian Michael looked a lot better in this one, too. Is definitely going to be a good handcuff for your Matt Jones owners out there. Um, in terms of fallers, LaDainian Washington definitely showed that his floor is basically zero. 
um, and that's depressing because he's still a really good player and he'll probably have a lot of good games, but uh, it definitely hurts your stock when you can go an entire game with only one target. Uh, we're holding steady though on Jordan Tayamu. Yes, he had a bad fantasy production this game, but if you look or watch the game, he didn't need to do anything. The running running game was working well. The defense was playing great. They got got uh, a special teams touchdown, so he didn't need to be uh, Superman in this one. So uh, any time that you're playing a game like that, you can expect a quarterback performance like his. Uh, same thing for Demorne Pearson L. He didn't need to be used much. He only had three catches on the day, but he still looked great every time he touched the ball. Definitely a buy low for both of those guys. Alonzo Russell as well, showing that even though he doesn't quite have the ceiling of a Pearson L or a Washington, he still continues to maintain a decent floor each week is a good flex play. All right, jumping over to the Dragons. Uh, Brandon Silver definitely sees a little rise to his value this week. Uh, he played you know, pretty well considering, um, at least in the first half, second half, he kind of sputtered a little bit, but definitely looked a, a lot more like his week one self. The Dragons are very close to being a really good team. They just need to be able to keep their composure the entire game. And then Austin Prohl looked good again, so definitely saw a rise in his fantasy value, although I think it might be a little bit inflated. No one really falling on this team. We're holding steady on Trey Williams and Kenneth Farrow. The running back tandem there, I think Jaquan Gardner is going to continue to edge himself out. He's not running as well as these guys, and he can't catch the ball nearly as well as they can either. So I'm... I know they continue to use all three backs pretty much equally. I'm hoping that they start leaning more towards Trey Williams and Kenneth Farrow just based on what you can see on film. They're the much better running backs in the, for this team. And then we're going to hold steady on Keenan Reynolds. He didn't have nearly the same fantasy production this week, but he still got multiple end zone targets, deep targets that just didn't turn out in his favor. This week might be another hard week to trust him going against St. Louis, but overall I think you can maintain his value for fantasy going forward. All right, then the last team, the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, a riser here would be whoever is their quarterback, uh, either Aaron Murray or Taylor Cornelius. This team looks like it's finally starting to get things put together. This offense definitely has the ability to be potent. Um, they just need to be able to finish drives every single week. And uh, this week will be very telling to see how good this team could potentially be getting to play a beat up DC Defenders team at home. Devian Smith saw a huge boost to his value again this week. He looked really good in week one. Still looked good in week two, even though Jacques West Patrick ended up beating him in the yards category. But this week, he reestablished that dominance, is still getting the vast majority of carries for his team. It's basically a 60-40 split right now between him and Jacques West Patrick. And overall, I think Devian Smith is just the better back. Uh, Jalen Tolliver also sees a rise after getting 13 targets. It's hard not to see a rise, but I think a lot of that had to do with the absence of Nick Truesdale. So probably not nearly as much of a rise as some people are giving him. Uh, as I mentioned, Jacques Patrick didn't do too well this week. He definitely saw a fall from grace in terms of his fantasy value. And then we're still holding steady on Daniel Williams, who scored a touchdown this week, but only had two catches on the day. And then Nick Truesdale, who was out, still got to hang on to the, uh, a potential tight end league winner if you play in a league with tight ends. Don't drop him. Don't trade him for cheap. He still is going to come on and finish the season strong as long as he can come back healthy. All right, let's jump into the buy low, sell high section of this video. I'm going to go down this list. Decent uh, shopping list for you guys if you are buying low. If you're in need of a quarterback, this is probably the best time for you guys to target a guy like Jordan Tayamu or even Cardale Jones. Um, if you can convince the owner or you have a decent option, you might be able to uh, you know, get them this week based on their poor performances over this last week. I don't think either of these performances are indicative of what these guys would do for fantasy going forward. So this is a good week to go after them. I think Devian Smith's value is still a little bit lower in the eyes of the uh, general fantasy owner out there than it should be. He is, is going to be a dominant runner on a team that is getting better every week. Eventually, he's going to pay off pretty big and get you some goal line touchdowns. But uh, like Devian Smith a lot. And then Danell Pumphrey, I, I think, is a good buy low right now. He hasn't been doing uh, nearly as much as we were hoping for in the fantasy category. But again, as we've, as we've mentioned, DC's offensive line has been uh, injured for the past couple weeks. So as they get stronger and as this team figures uh, their offensive chemistry out, Danell Pumphrey could see a huge rise in his value in the future. A couple wide receiver names here, as we've mentioned, the wide receivers for DC. 
a lot of people are probably dropping him in their rankings. I think you could probably get uh, Rashad Ross or Eli Rogers for a lot cheaper this week, and I think that would be a good strategy. I think this, again, this week, I, I'm i reading it as more of a fluke rather than more of things to come. So if you can get them cheaper this week, do that. Same thing for DeMorne and Pearson L, who didn't see nearly as many targets this week because they didn't need to throw the ball. Definitely a good target to go after this week, as is Khalil Lewis. He His day is coming. He's going to have a two or three touchdown day. Cam Phillips is not going to get three touchdowns every single week. And uh, when that switches over, look for Khalil Lewis to be the guy that's being targeted in the red zone. Uh, and then obviously Mikael McKay, you can probably get him for dirt right now. So if you have a spot on your bench, you can just wait out this New York Guardians team to figure out their offense. He would be a good guy to stash. Same thing for Nick Truesdale. Uh, if you play in a league that you need to start a tight end, if you can uh, get Nick Truesdale without having to give up Donald Parham, uh, if you sell any other tight end, I still think he is worth a buy at this point. A um, couple of names here, if you are looking for some uh, people to throw in to acquire some of the names I just said, I do think Trey McBride is probably a sell high at this point. We didn't see him all year. Finally came on and looked really good in week three, but then got hurt again. Who knows how long he's, he was already dealing with some injuries in the off season. So this might just be a perpetual thing with him. Plus Nelson Spruce is there. They have Jordan Smallwood. So I don't think that his dominance is going to be this uh prolific every single week so his value may be inflated right now and if that injury ends up being worse than we know you might be able to get off of him quickly after picking him up off of waivers or if you just held on to him after drafting he's a decent sell high candidate austin pro is another name that i would be willing to sell this week he uh showed us in week one and week three that he can be dominant and then week two he just absolutely disappeared so i typically try to move on from people that have the ability to just absolutely disappear. If you can get a more stable option, I think this is a good week to move on. And then Jalen Tolliver, same thing. I think he saw a huge uptick in his volume based on Nick Truesdale being out. Uh, once Aaron Murray is back, Nick Truesdale is back, SJ Green is there. We don't really know uh, how much volume Jalen Tolliver is going to continue to have, but if you can sell him on the fact that he got 13 targets this last week, I think this is probably your best uh, sell window for Jalen Tolliver. Um, in terms of buying high, if you're able to convince the person with Donald Parham to give him to you at this point, especially if you need to start at tight ends, but even if you don't, I would definitely try to do that. I think he is uh, one of the most valuable guys that is not on a Houston roster and should definitely be targeted uh, in trades if you can convince the owner to give him up uh, for you know not requiring me you to spend everything on your team but uh, definitely a name to try to acquire uh, before he continues to see a rise in his value all right guys well, that was pretty much it for the day uh, like i said lots of changes right now trying to adapt as we go on without overreacting because we do still know that there's a lot of season left to be played there's a lot of things that are going to change each and every single week so we got to stay up to date on everything that's happening so hopefully we can help you guys do that in your fantasy leagues in daily make sure you're just staying up to date with all the movement around value in term or fantasy value across the xfl but if you guys are looking for a text form of everything we've talked about, um, make sure you check out our website, fantasyaddictionnetwork.com. We've got everything there. We posted up stats and uh, like consistency charts this week so you can see which teams are performing the best against which positions. That should help you make some of those lineup decisions, especially in daily going into week four. Uh, but check that website out. Also, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be posting stuff every day to keep you guys up to date on everything that's happening. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.